My name is Jeff Weber. I am the Executive General Manager of Marine and Mineral Resources. I've been in the industry for 40 years. Um, I started off as an engineer on Cape Size ships. I went into the towage industry, then I was the CEO of an offshore company, and I've come back into the resource industry. So it's like full circle for me. The, the idea of a transshipping solution came from the fact that the West Pilbara is fairly much stranded tonnage. The secret about an iron ore project is the supply chain. We've got to get it from a mine to, to the market. And the only sensible way to do that, and the only way, long term competitive way to do that, is to put it on Cape Size ships. Now, Cape Size ships require a deep water berth. They draw 19 metres of water, and to have a deep water berth in the vicinity of our iron ore mines was not possible. If you wanted to get out to deep water, the, the closest deep water is where we're going to, which is about 22 nautical miles out. So we would have to dredge a channel 22 nautical miles and the cost associated with that, plus the environmental impact of that, would have been prohibitive. That's why the transshipping operation has been the right solution for this project. There's two parts for basically. So the first part is that we had to design and build them and now we're back into operation. So and now we're doing both things consecutively. We're building still up in China and we're starting to operate down here in Australia. Originally looking at building two of these transshippers and now we're building seven. We came up with a design here in Perth and we decided on an ATB barge situation which basically means you've got a tug locked into the back of a barge and that tug pushes that barge around. What's really unique about these is that normally you have an elevated wheelhouse on a tug and it overlooks the front of the barge. We couldn't do that because we have such a large hopper on the barge so we couldn't actually see over the top. So then we decided that we would go with controlling the whole vessel from the wheelhouse of the barge. And that hasn't been done in the world ever before. So there's an umbilical cord that runs down through the barge, hooks up to the tug, and the controls on the barge control the tug. It feels like a ship. You forget the tug's there after a while. And that's been the exciting thing about this project is that we've designed this from scratch. Um, we looked at it, sort of, I took an idea, went to some experts, and then in a period of like 12 months, we went from this is an idea to here's a design, here's the shipyard, let's build it. Also, designing from scratch allows you to think about the crew. So how do we keep them safe? How do we make this thing as commercially viable as we possibly can? How do we look after their well-being? Because at the end of the day, the operation is only ever going to be as good as the crew. The scale of it, I don't think there is an iron ore project that does anywhere near this volume of cargo annually. The, the ATB situation where we've got um, not self-propelled vessels, we've got tugs with, with barges, that allowed us to carry more cargo in each barge. The other thing about it is that we were able to look at what, what are some of the key things that make transshipping more commercial. And again, what's different a little bit about these is that we can load it faster than most transshippers in the world and we can discharge it faster than most transshippers in the world. And again, that reduces your cycle time and makes the, the amount of iron ore that each transshipper can carry goes up. And so therefore your cost per tonne of transshipping comes down. There were two options to get the barges down from China. So we could either tow them down or we could put them on a heavy lift vessel. In the end, we decided to go with the heavy lift vessel and there was two reasons for that. One is that it's faster, so they, they come down at sort of 12, 13 knots, whereas the tow operation is about five knots, but it's also safer. So the, the towing operation would have taken maybe 30 days, and you're going through some difficult waters, so there was, there was an opportunity for piracy. So we put two of these onto a very, very large heavy lift vessel in Joshan, and we brought them down here. So there was two parts of the operation. One was to, to load them up in China, and they what happens is the vessel sinks down into the water, we tow the, the barges over the top of the vessel. Once they're in position, the vessel comes back up again and lifts those barges. Normally there's only one, one barge on a ship per time and, and the next three there will only be one. But this one was a little bit more complex because we had two on there. So on the day we were floating off, we sunk the vessel into the water and then once the first one started to, to float off, we were able to get the tugs, use the ship's lines and then get it off the vessel. And once we had it off the vessel, we towed it across to an anchorage and we had to come back and then take the second one off. And the second one came off the back. The first one was a bit easier because it came off from the side. So once we got it floating, all we had to do was pull the bow out and then it just came out quite nicely. The second one, as I said, it, it came up and we had to take it out backwards in between two structures on, on, the, on the ship itself. 
And because these barges are so large and a lot of infrastructure sitting up the top, that was probably the most tricky part of the whole operation. We have two mid-res tugs down there, so each, each barge has a tug which, which is set up in the ATV situation. So we have the Minres Odin and the Minres Thor. So the Odin at the moment is hooked up with the Minres Ali, which is the barge, and the Minres Thor is hooked up with the Minres Kulba. Their role was two parts. So the first part of their role was to assist in, in holding lines and, and getting them off. And then once they got off the, the vessel, they were able to tow it down to the anchorage and then once the barge was anchored, they came around behind and then locked into the articulated tug and barge arrangement. With the transship of the tug, not only provides propulsion, but it, it is actually the, the hotel for the crew. So all of the crew sleep on the, on the tug and we have, we have accommodation there for about 20 people and we have 17 crew at any given time. So in order to run the operation, we've not only got the transshippers, but we've got crew transfer vessels. And these are critical in terms of how we actually manage the operation. They can run out to the OGV, we can put uh, maintenance people on the transshipper, they can go out and pick them up and bring them back, we can do stores runs. So they have a critical role and we've got two of those. This is the first time anything of this scale has been really attempted in Australia. When we talk about scale, we're talking about the overall volume but also the productivity of each transshipper. So that's quite unique. So the transshipping solution has really changed the, the face of this project uh, and particularly the scale of it. So once we get all of the transshippers down here, um, but because they're all flagged in Australia, which means they're, they're Australian vessels, will actually be from a standing start, the largest Australian marine company, which is quite extraordinary considering that Minres Marine didn't even exist two years ago. 